very much, yes, Lindelo Masigane. Now, scientists around the world, including here in South Africa, are racing to come up with vaccines and treatments for COVID-19. Several companies are said to be working on antiviral drugs, some of which are already in use against other illnesses. There have been some announcements on so-called cures, including a drink promoted by the president of Madagascar. And who can forget U.S. President Donald Trump's ideas about disinfectant and UV light? Well, to find out what the actual progress is in developing a potential vaccine and treatment, we turn to world-renowned expert, Professor Helen Rees. She's part of the World Organization's Public Health Emergency Solidarity Trial, and she's the executive director of the VETS Reproductive Health and HIV Institute. She's also part of the panel that's advising the health minister on South Africa's COVID-19 response. Professor Rees, good morning, and thank you very much uh, for your time. I understand that South Africa plays a very important role in, in this international initiative of trying, of the solidarity trial, of trying to find uh, a possible treatment, uh, maybe even a vaccine, because of our experience with how we've dealt with HIV and AIDS. Yes, that's right. Um, South Africa's infrastructure for research and our scientists are really world class. And sadly, that is because uh, somewhat because of HIV and TB. But um, we, we have built up a reputation of having a very good scientific infrastructure. And for that reason, um, we for, for the African region, we, we are potentially an important country to participate in a lot of these clinical trials so that we can get answers that are useful for our region and for the country. Now, in this particular World Health Organization's Public Health Emergency Solidarity Trial, what progress is being made in regards to that? What can you tell us this morning? So the idea from the World Health Organization, when they looked at what had happened in China, there were many really good efforts to try and do research in China, um, in, in this instance for the Solidarity Trial, to try and find what medicines actually really help in treating seriously ill patients. But many of the studies that were done in China were just too small to give definitive answers. So the World Health Organization has put together the Solidarity Trial, and they're doing this with other types of trials as well, where what they're trying to do is to get many academic institutions in many countries across the world to all at once contribute data to the same protocol, to the same study, so that we really fast track results um, and start to find things like better treatments as quickly as possible. Are, are we making progress? Are we getting anywhere closer in finding treatments? So the solidarity study is looking at hospitalized patients who are um, obviously quite sick if they're in hospital. At the moment, uh, for, from the WHO's perspective, there are six countries that have uh, participated, uh, have started participating in this trial, and well over a thousand patients have already been enrolled in the study. And South Africa is moving closer and closer to being the first African country to participate. All of our faculties of health sciences are going to be joining in. We've got our top scientists in many of our public sector hospitals joining in as well. Um, and what we're going to be doing is looking at four different treatments. Uh, compared to what we call standard of care in uh, patients who are hospitalized, whether they're moderately ill or severely ill, they'll all be eligible to be enrolled into this study. And by looking at that, we're going to be able to compare different treatments to each other um, and hopefully get the answers much more quickly by having a global effort about what is the best way to treat seriously ill patients. And when does that get going in South Africa? You have got an idea, Prof? Well, it's, all, it's with the regulatory authorities at the moment. It's with SAPRA, it's with ethics committees, um, but we've got 16 hospitals uh, getting started up and ready to go. Uh, the World Health Organization has started to ship the, the, the medicines across to us that will be used in the study. So we're hoping in the next couple of weeks that we will be ready to go. Now, that's as far as uh, treatments are concerned. We know that uh, vaccines uh, take a long time. Yvek and I, when we started the program at nine, we mentioned in our intro that we know that vaccines can take years. I mean, we're sitting here today. The world has yet to find an, a vaccine for HIV AIDS. That process of vaccine versus treatments, do they live along each other? Do they work separately? And people are saying, oh, we're looking forward to a vaccine in two years. 
Well, we certainly are looking forward to a vaccine. I think that most of us in the field recognize that really to break the back of this pandemic, we are going to need a vaccine because otherwise uh, the risk is that it's going to keep coming back and it might become seasonal. And then we're going to have cycles of infection coming round and round like this. Um, and it's not going to be a nicer virus every time it comes. It's going to be the same nasty virus that it is now. So we do need a vaccine. Um, but the, it's been an unprecedented global effort so far to develop a vaccine in a way and a speed that we've never seen before. So we started in January and some of the global organizations I work with, we start, we identified that this could be a big risk, this virus. And so we already had reached out and started to sponsor um, vaccine uh, developers. And we've now got, WHO's now got on its books over 100 potential candidate vaccines. Um, and some of them, about uh, six of them now, have started in very early human trials where we're looking at uh, safety, how the body reacts and what's the, the best dosage of the vaccine to give. Um, so that's already started. But South Africa will certainly be playing a very important role in these vaccine studies. Now, finally, uh, Prof, before I let you go, I mean, there's a lot of fake news. Uh, we saw the Madagascan president, uh, Andre Rojalina, saying there's a particular tea that they can drink and it protects the people of, of Madagascar. And you hear U.S. President Donald Trump talking about disinfectants and UVs. What would your message be? I mean, you are one of the scientists who is involved in trying to get the real stuff going. South Africa is going to play a key role, as you say. What would your message be to anybody watching this about some of these fake stuff, in my view, that's doing the rounds? Well, thanks for that question, Dan. I'm also the chair of SAPRA, which is our drug regulatory authority. And we're watching very closely for, for all these false claims because um, at the best they can do nothing and you can waste a lot of money. But the worst, they can be really dangerous and they can give people a false sense of security. Um, which means that their behavior might then uh, become more risky. So th from the point of view of the Drug Regulatory Authority, we're looking hard, fast, and as quickly as we can at all the medicines that are coming through to us out there, all the rapid tests, all of these things, but we're making sure they're good quality. So if people start to claim that they can cure uh, COVID-19 or protect you, unless it's actually gone through some sort of evaluation, the kind of clinical trials we were just talking about, uh, that there can be no such claim. And in South Africa, we will really be chasing people who are trying to take people's money with false claims and possibly dangerous consequences. Prof, thank you very much. That's Professor Helen Rees. Good advice there. There's no treatment yet. There's no vaccine yet. Any